Hey guys, I'm Nito King, and this is Space Quest 4. Despite what it says at the title bar at the top, last time I managed to get my hands on a time pod and use it to escape to the Space Quest 10 time period, where I got carried by a giant dinosaur bird of some kind, landed in this nest, and then had to tangle with the latex babes of Estros. And they killed me. So let's have a quick recap of that and move on with the game, shall we? You've got a lot of nerve coming back here, Roger Wilco. After leaving me the way you did, you male scum. This is the last woman you'll ever dump on. Right, girls? Right. right. Said you couldn't be tied down. I said that? You said you had to be free to roam the galaxy. Was that me? You'll be sorrier than you look. We'll see to that. Yeah! Into the sub, fly boy. Alright, so last time I tried to escape and it didn't work, so I guess I don't have much choice but to go along with him. Yeah, and there's some neat stuff to look at while we're traveling to their secret underwater base. Say, there's an odd looking specimen. What have I stepped into this time? You think to yourself, as the latex babe submarine makes its way through the eerie blackness. You hope these women soon realize that they must have the wrong guy. You're not sure what it is, but you bet it would look cool spewing through the propellers. This is Zandra. We are approaching checkpoint six. Prepare to open the tunnel door. This is a sea cave. Thank you. Activate the door. Actually, this place doesn't look too bad. I mean... And a nice swimming pool, a diving board in the background, and... I'm gonna be surrounded by women in one-piece bathing suits. How bad can this really be? Yeah, you can actually look at something here. Say, there's an odd-looking specimen. I'm pretty sure that wasn't the sound file they wanted to use there. Sit down. Comfy, Mr. Wilco? Hey, what are you doing? Let me go, witch. Shut up. Your whimpering sickens me. I'll teach you not to run out on me. Thorine is quite knowledgeable in the ways of torture. I'll let the two of you get acquainted. Thorine, do your stuff. With pleasure, Zandra. Let me introduce you to a friend of mine. This is Epiwhip 357, the most powerful hand hair remover in the universe, and it's capable of shaving your legs clean off. I've always wanted to see a man shave with one of these, but I guess you'll do. 
Now you know the meaning of the word pain. Ah! It's a sea slug. Run, girls. Hey, hey wait, wait a second. The guy in the chair. Hello, ladies. Ah, crap. I didn't think slugs had scales and flippers and tongues. Shiny stainless steel instruments cover the surgical tray. Some of them look vaguely familiar as veterinary instruments. All right, that's obviously what I need. Don't mess with it. Keep your hands to yourself. You can't do that. Don't mess with it. Well, what am I supposed to do? There's nothing I can do. We're glad you could play Space Quest 4. As usual, you've been a real pant load. Alright, yeah, I was skipping the obvious. If you watched the cutscene that took place before this carefully enough, you might have seen something we can use. This switch activates a laser. That's the laser that took off our pant legs, so it'll hurt the uh, slug here. And skipping any uh, playing around. You see what looks like highly pressurized oxygen tanks. Hey, I used to bullseye Orads with highly pressurized stuff back on Corona. Our hero! Wasn't he great, girls? Well, Raj, I guess we can call it even. Thank you for ridding our fortress of that slimy, awful sea slug. I, uh... I know I can't blame you for backing out at the last minute. I guess I was a little overbearing. Sorry. Can we still be good friends? Well, now, wait a minute. Let's talk about this. No, Roger. You were right. You don't need to spare my feelings. It just wasn't meant to be. It's better this way. Well, girls, I feel like celebrating. Let's go shopping! Well, it makes slightly more sense in the plot of Leather Goddesses of Phobos. Slightly. Meanwhile, back in Space Quest 12. have we here? This is the rebel scum we captured in the Space Quest IV time sector. He had just aided Wilco in escaping. The readout on his time gun indicates that Wilco was successfully transported into this time sector as you feared. That is no longer a concern. Wilco will surrender to us once he has learned we have captured his son. Then he will be destroyed once and for all. <laughs> Alright, now that would be a much bigger threat if Roger actually knew that they had his son. Or if he knew that he had a son. But screw that. Let's just enjoy our shopping trip. Alright, and that's the last we'll ever see of them, except for this thing they dropped. It's an Autobox Teller Machine Card. I think we'd better try to return that. You pick up the ATM card. And what's that going on in the background? It's just another vital part of the Galaxy Galleria Shopping Mall. 
skate o rama Blow by foot thrusters boost the skaters along nicely. Eh, we'll go in there and play a bit later. For now, I don't even really feel like shopping. Let's get out of here. Boy, isn't it just like a sequel police cyborg to guard the main entrances and exits? Yep, there's no way to get out of here unless we find an alternate exit. So, let's get on that. Maybe see if we can catch up with the latex babes. I hate these conveyor belts. I just gotta say that much. This guy looks like the living torso. He probably works for an intergalactic freak show. Yeah, if you go past where you want to go, it's tough to get back. This is Socks, a high-class, high-priced dress shop. In the window, a robotic mannequin struts its stuff. Keep your hands to yourself. You speak in the direction of the glass, but your syllables merely come careening back. This guy, or is it a gal, doesn't look like anybody or anything you've ever seen before. Alright, well let's head into this shop and see what's going on. It's a women's clothing store. Well, it could be something useful in here. Are you sure you got the right store, hon? I'm not sure. I think I'll just look around for a bit. Let us know if we can help. That's the way, Raj. Assert your masculinity. The latest in swank fashion, displayed in a number of horrifying colors. While enjoying this banquet of fashion, you wonder what you might look like in one of these cute little frocks. Hey, what kind of thing is that for a studly guy like you to be thinking? Get a hold of yourself, fella. Hey, you don't judge me, Gary. You don't judge me. Closet mannequin whiffer, eh? I said don't judge me. Despite your love for Syntho's skin, you decide that wouldn't be gentlemanly. Alright, nothing to do in here. Thanks for shopping at Saks. Is it Saks? Sex? Sex? I can never figure out how they're supposed to pronounce the name of this store. Alright, let's move on. There's a bunch of different places to go in here. It's where most of the rest of the game takes place, really. Ooh! Arcade. Sounds like fun. Why, it's Buckazoid Bill's Arcade and Sushi Bar! Sushi Bar? It doesn't have the slightest notion as to what you might be saying. Alright, we'll have time for games later. Let's keep looking around. Jeez, this guy could be a whole basketball team. You suddenly remember an off-color tall joke. But as you begin to open your mouth, your will to live overcomes your juvenile impulse. In other words, you wisely keep your trap shut. You only get one option to talk to that guy. If he leaves the screen, you'll never see him again. Hey, I remember this place from Space Quest 3. Monolith Burger, the only fast food chain to survive the infamous food wars. So, is that a Demolition Man reference, or did this game come out first? No shirt, no shoes, no service! Same to you, pig. Alright, we're not welcome here. 
Yeah, Radio Shock is an interesting place. In later versions, they changed it to Hurts So Good. <laughs> Sulfur. This shopper smells as though it comes from a planet where the only showers are volcanic ones. As much as we enjoy seeing you get in trouble, we must warn you that this type of behavior is universally considered either rude or amorous, which could get you either killed or married. Well, it doesn't sound so bad. But anyway, for some reason they don't have a sound file for looking at the Radio Shock sign. It's very pleasant looking. And just generic stuff. You don't need to look at that. It feels just like a store with hot dogs and pickles stuck to it. It doesn't smell great, but it smells better than you. It's like licking a battery. Alright, and we can't afford anything at Radio Shock yet, so we'll be back when we've got more money to spare. 59 Buckazoids just doesn't go very far. Hey, here's something interesting. For some reason, there is a gathering here. For some reason, there is a gathering here. Right, but I want to know about the store. For some reason, there... It's the Software Access Store. If it's soft, we're aware. All right, so let's find out what the crowd's all about. What's going on in there? The two geeks from Andromeda are in there signing copies of their latest release. A Space Quest game, perhaps? You never noticed how much adventure game players tend to smell like potato chips, beer, and money. With the way this crowd smells, you'd want to lick them. I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be phrased as a question, but let's not get into that again. Keep your hands to yourself. Eh, can't get into the store, so let's just head over to this ATM next door. Wow, an Autobox teller machine! I've got a card for that. Maybe I can get some money. You can't use that here. Yeah, I'm using the mouse that accidentally double clicks sometimes. You obviously don't resemble a blonde woman. What a surprise. No, well, there's a slight superficial resemblance. Oh well, anyway, that's as far as we can go. If we keep heading the direction I was going, we'll just end up back at the lobby. So we've only seen two clothing stores, and one of them doesn't really offer a lot of clothing that would be, shall we say, gender appropriate. So I guess we're going to have to head to the other clothing store, the big and tall one. I was thinking of heading on to the women's store, but then I decided, nah, I'll just go into this one. We'll be heading back to say Alex later to uh, sample their wares, let's say. Pardon me, sir. You appear to be in dire need of my services. Never let a fashionista tell you that. I'm sorry, I lost my boots and the legs of my pants in a deadly fight with a giant sea slug, which I won in the nick of time with my clever thinking and my, uh, cleverness. I see. Well, all right. Let me get your measurements. We've got just the thing for the likes of you. I'm rather sad that they actually play the scene straight. I assume you will be wanting something in the generic space hero line? These will do for you. Try them on in the dressing room here if you wish. Seems like you should provide a chicken suit or something, but no. Nope. Totally serious.
You change your clothes, not forgetting the items in your pocket. You never know when you'll need them. You step out looking good as new. That will be a 20 bucketoids, please. Uh, pay for the same clothes I was wearing when I came in? Screw that. How dare you try to leave without paying? Yeah, like he can catch up to me. Well, at this point I can go back in and carry through the same conversation and arrive at the same place as if that never happened, but it never happened. And he can try to pay with the ATM card, but he won't take it. Gotta be cash. Thank you so much for shopping with us, sir. Do come back soon. Yeah, I'm sure I'll never need to come back here again. Especially if I can't even look at the stuff on the shelf. I tried. He won't look. The bargain shelves are loaded with all types of great things nobody would want. This looks like a pressure suit for something with upper body appendages. This suit is a replacement shell for some sort of exoskeletal wanderer. And hey, check out those boots. The well-dressed alien will want to be seen in this lovely ensemble, perfect for those nights out at the Solar Ballet. This one looks like it might have been designed for ceremonial function. It looks like a slip cover for a snake. It smells just as good as it looks. All right, I think we're done here. All right, so we're back to looking like our old selves again. And I think that's pretty much all I need to accomplish in this video. The rest of the Galaxy Gallery has got some really repetitive and occasionally boring stuff. So of course I'm going to want to put all that into one video. But there is one thing I've had a hankering to do since I got here. No, it's not stopping at the arcade. That falls under the repetitive and boring heading that I mentioned earlier. What I really want to do is make my way across here. And I was a little late. I think if you put the speed way up and just keep clicking, it's possible to walk against the conveyor belts, but I find it's usually just easier to go all the way around if you have to. Very rarely is there any kind of problem if you do that. Otherwise, it's easier to go right to left if you go into the stores, and left to right if you want to come to the center. Alright, time to have some fun in zero-g. That kid went right through me. There is no reply. You talk to yourself. You talk... You talk to yourself. I don't know if you even can talk to anybody in here. Alright. Let's get a little higher. Get some excitement. And with unpatched versions of the game, sometimes that will actually lock up your game if you get spun around as you're leaving the screen. Fortunately, that didn't happen this time, and I can just keep swimming around freely. Yeah, everybody down below is so small, they look like weird aliens or something. Oh yeah, that's right, they are. Alright, that's enough fun for here. Hey, she's kind of cute. Oh, never mind. I was distracted for a second there. I wonder if I can get her number. Or any information about her at all, really. But, oh well. That'll be it for this video, and I'll let you guys see what happens when you quit. Next time. See ya on the Chrono Screen Time Jockey.